Hi, and welcome back. Today, we are going to do a summary of all the trigonometry for grade 10. Okay, the first thing we need to be familiar with is the general trig ratios. Our six trig ratios are sin, cos, tan, which you can get on your calculator, then cot, sec, cosec. Now, to remember what are their ratios, we're going to say oranges, apples, oranges, apples, hearts, hearts. Oranges, apples, oranges, apples, hearts, hearts. What we also remember is that O represents Y, A represents X, and H represents R. Hearts are red. If you go in alphabetical order, A comes before O, X comes before Y. So we can change any of these trig ratios from O, H, and A to X, Y's, and R's. Okay, so we have our ratios written with O, A, and H, and we have our ratios written with X, Y, and R. Okay, then we need to know our Cartesian plane. We need to know that our Cartesian plane starts at zero degrees on the horizontal line. It is different from your geography, so you must be careful. We also know that in the first quadrant, all ratios are positive. In the second ratio, only sin and cosec is positive. In the third quadrant, we have tan and cot that is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, we have cos and sec that is positive. So we usually say all students take coffee to remember this information. Right, let us do our calculator work. Now there's two styles where they can give you the calculator work. Number one is where they simply give you the angle. So if I gave you sin 30 degrees, all you would do is press in your calculator sin 30 equals. And that would give you an answer of a half. Now what if I had cosec? 30 degrees. Because it is not from the original ratios that are on your calculator, what you know is cosec is the same as 1 over sin. So we are going to press in our calculator 1 divided by sin 30 degrees. You usually have the fraction button, so you press the fraction button, then you press 1 and at the bottom you press sin 30 degrees which would equal to 2. Now, what happens when we have to calculate the angle? When we have to calculate the angle, it means I give you a ratio, and I tell you it's equal to a certain value. Then you would press shift, cos, and the value. That would give you an answer. in an angle form. But if you are given how do you do a ratio that is not on your calculator? When we are given a ratio that is not on our calculator, we know that 1 over cos theta is going to equal to 2 because we are aware that sec theta is equal to 1 over cos theta. So what we're doing now is we flip over. We make this cos over 1. We flip over the 2, which now gives us 1 over 2. Then we press in our calculator, shift cos a half, which would equal to 60. Okay, after you are familiar with your calculator work, you're going to get questions where you have to solve for the ratios. But they will specifically say, solve for the ratio without the calculator. 
Okay, now there are two ways they're going to give you this. They're going to give you a normal equation. Right. When we are given a normal equation, you will see most of the time in grade 10, the restriction tends to be 0 to 90. Which means in grade 10, you're mostly going to work in the first quadrant. But if it is not in the first quadrant, then they usually give you the drawing. So we're going to start by getting the ratio alone which means we have to get cos theta alone. We're going to divide by 25. So we have cos theta is equal to 7 over 25. Then, because it's in grade 10, the quadrant is either going to be given to you or you're going to look at the signs. Now, we can see that it's a positive and the restriction they gave us is 0 to 90, which means that I am in the first quadrant. Right. Now, we've seen the quadrant by looking at the sign. It's positive. Then we're looking at the restriction, 0 to 90. If you look, this is where we are basing our entire quadrant information, 0 to 90, and it's positive. We know it's not going to be in the fourth quadrant because that is between 270 and 360. Then we're going to use Pythagoras. So we're first going to mark cos is what over what? Cos is x over r. Now we're going to use Pythagoras. We know it is positive because y in the first quadrant is positive. Once we've got x, y, and r, any equation they do after that, we can solve. So let's say they asked us what is, what is the value of sin theta. Then we know that x is equal to 7, y is equal to 24, and r is equal to 25. Sin theta is y over r. So our final answer will be 24 over 25. When they are giving you this, these questions, sometimes the questions are easy. You would only require rule 3 and rule 4. You don't end up doing all the steps. Sometimes they'll simply give you the question. Like if I gave you the same question, but all I did was I drew a Cartesian plane. I gave you the first quadrant. And instead of giving you a ratio sentence, the way I did at this point, I simply gave you that x was 7. We didn't know why. And I told you r was 25. So it's the same question, but you could eliminate step one where you have to get the ratio alone. Then you could eliminate the step two where you have to decide where am I, which quadrant am I. All you had to do was use Pythagoras. You have your x and you have your r. You solve for y and once you solve you simply substitute. So, depending on the type of question they ask you, if they give you the drawing, it is easier. If they don't give you the drawing, then you have to do a few more steps. The next thing they're going to give you is triangles. Now, triangles, they're going to ask you the same questions. Sometimes they'll give it to you in a 2D drawing. Sometimes they'll ask you straightforward. But the method is the same. They will either give you one angle and one side. Remember in grade 10, 
you only work with 90 degree triangles. So it is a given that there will always be a 90 degree angle. But on top of that, you would be given one more angle and one more side. So if I was given a triangle, the 90 degree is given. I'm now giving you an angle which is 40 degrees and a side which is 35. When you are given these triangles, it doesn't matter whether you are given one angle and one side or if you are given two sides. The two essential steps is that you have to choose an angle. You can't randomly start working without choosing an angle. So in this case, I'm choosing 40 degrees. Then you need to mark your O, A and H. So if I chose 40 degrees, my AB will be my O. My H is always opposite the 90 degrees and the remaining side is going to be my A. Now, when they give you an angle and a side, then the next steps are usually to calculate a side because to calculate an angle will be basic grade nine work, sum of angles of a triangle. I know that's 90 degrees, I know that's 40 degrees, sum of angles of a triangle equal to 180. So I can simply calculate a is 50 degrees. So in this question, when they give you an angle and a side, it's very rare that they're going to say, what is the value of angle A? They would always be interested in what is the length of a side. So let us calculate the length of AB and then the length of AC. Now, if I want AB, it's side I want over side I have, which is BC. Now, AB is O and BC is A. Now, what ratio is O over A? O over A is a tan ratio. So, I'm going to have it equal to my ratio, which is tan. And which specific angle did you work with? What angle did you choose to work with in the beginning? So the angle I had worked with was 40 degrees. So I'm going to have 10, 40 degrees. Once you've got your ratio and your angle, you're going to calculate. So we have AB over BC, which is 35, is equal to 10, 40 degrees. Get rid of my 35. This is your standard algebra. Once I multiply it on one side, I must multiply the other side. So using your calculator, you'll calculate AB is equal to 35, 10, 40. So we've got AB is equal to 29,4 units. Now to calculate AC, all you have to do is use Pythagoras. Right. Now, if you are given two sides. The two things that are exactly the same is number one, you have to choose an angle. So let's say I am choosing to solve for angle B. Once you choose your angle, you have to mark your O, A and H. So if I chose B as my angle, then I have AC as O, my H is always my hypotenuse and A would be the remaining side. Now look at what you have and then see what ratio can you make. The two alphabets we have is A and H. So what two ratios can we make from A and H? A and H we can make cos or we can make sec. Now it's always easier to choose a ratio that's on the calculator. So we're going to choose A over H 
which is cos, and which angle did we use? We used B. Now, let's fill in all the information we have. We have 110 over 200 is equal to cos B. But look at the difference in the calculator work now. When we were doing the first example, we simply press 35, 10, 40 in our calculator. But now when we are calculating the angle, you have to press shift. So you're going to press shift, cos, and then 110 over 200. Which will give us B is equal to 56,63. Now remember, as soon as you press shift, the cos fell out. Can you see? I don't have cos B is equal to 56,63. As soon as you press shift, the ratio falls. So I've got 56,63 degrees is equal to B. If I want angle C, we simply use sum of angles of a triangle and you can calculate angle C. The last part we have is special angles. Now the special angles that we have is 30, 45, 60 and 90. If you don't have a new calculator, then you need to know this by heart, but the new calculator does most of this. However, if you are writing exams, especially if you are entering university, you may not use a calculator for these special angles. So it is advisable that you do learn them. Now to learn special angles, you can do it two ways. You can use a Cartesian plane, and then we are starting at 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Realize I'm going from 4 up to 0. And then I'm starting 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. But I'm rooting all of them. Now what these 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 are giving me is my X and my Y. R is 2 for the entire Cartesian plane. So if I wanted any ratio, let's say I wanted 10 of 60 degrees. All I would do is go to the 60 degree line, which is over the angle, not under the angle. I know that 10 is O over A or y over x. I look at the value of y and I look at the value of x and that would be my final answer. So once you know your special angles, it's simply substitution. Now this is one way of doing special angles. The other way of doing special angles is by using two 90 degree triangles. Right. These two triangles, you also have to memorize them. They are not found anywhere, but you can choose to either use the Cartesian plane or to use the triangles. Now, let's say we were doing 10 of 60 again. We know that 10 of 60 is O over A. So I would look at my 60 degree angle. I know my O is root of 3. And since that would be my O, my A would be 1, which will still give me root of 3. If you were doing it in the exams, if you simply press 10 of 60, it would immediately give you root of 3. You'd be allocated all your marks, but the problem comes in later when you are asked not to use a calculator and they can pick up that you've used your calculator. So it is advisable that you know one of these two methods at any given time. Thank you for watching.